un événement pour la course et donc ce n'est pas pour venir. Nous allons essayer la nouvelle technologie. Ah, ah, c'est des chaussures. Eh, c'est des chaussures. Tu ne peux pas me montrer l'autre Non. Si, per centrare, centra. Grazie. Three, four, eight. Three, four, eight. So the scales are the same, huh? It is Thursday, day before the race, CCC. Got my wristband and bib and everything yesterday. And the rain has started and set in today, which I'm kind of pleased about, to be honest. Uh, I just do a lot better in the cooler weather. It's easier to eat solid food. I don't have to drink as much, which is easier on my stomach. And I'm just more used to it. It's nice having the good weather for four or five hours out in the mountains. You have the good views and everything, but 100 kilometers all day I'll take cool weather and a bit of rain any day of the week so I'm pleased about that I got my loam peaks are getting the fiber mount so I'll put on them about to go pick those up so it's like a new version of the mega grip a lighter version and they do it for free which is pretty cool all you have to do is sign a waiver and then email them some feedback to, to say how the shoe was and having the Vibram in the wet conditions is going to be awesome on the slip, slippery rock and things like that Vibram is just uh, pretty damn good when it comes to uh, those sort of conditions or just in general it's just way better than a normal outsole so they couldn't do my temps because they're too worn out or whatever so getting on the lone peaks which is fine uh, as far as thoughts on the race just ready to go and enjoy it it's like the reward now the whole process and experience of training and traveling for this race and the whole bits has been super enjoyable super fun so yeah now it's just like the reward go out and enjoy it and do the people that have supported me to get here uh proud which is my family so that's pretty much it and just finish the thing <laughs> i watched an interview a couple of days ago with a lot of the pro runners uh, running utmb it was amazing how many of them said that their main goal is just to finish the distance obviously that's utmb not ccc but uh it's kind of the equivalent for me for what it is for them because uh, 100 kilometers in these mountains is uh it's a big day for me so you know just want to get it done and finish it and that's pretty much about it three five two three if you want to follow me on the uh, live tracker if i get this video up before the race but good trick when you're putting bibs on put a pillow inside your shirt and you can get it nice and straight and uh nice and even Home sweet home. Back to real life. <laughs> Been slacking on making uh, this video to sort of give an update on on how the race went, I know, but uh, I just got home yesterday. Uh, Travelled around Italy a little bit with mum and dad uh, for the last week after the race and I didn't have good internet anyway so I probably wouldn't have been able to upload a video. Also ended up with very little video or photos or anything really of the actual race so whatever I have got I'll just put on now. Ready to switch on the engine and start to run for this fantastic journey around the Mont Blanc. 
So the race was a success for me. I'm stoked with how I ran the whole trip, the whole experience. Couldn't have asked for much more. It was kind of like a dream come true. I didn't know what to expect going into it because I've only ran 100 kilometers once and that did not go well at all. So I figured on this course, around about the best day I was I was capable of was to run around 16 hours and I ended up running 14.42. So, you know, I started just trying to get the best out of myself. And when you can exceed your expectations like that and go beyond what you sort of thought you were capable of, that is really the pinnacle of it. That's what keeps me coming back. It's what makes all the harder races and the hard training and everything makes it all worthwhile. So when it does happen, you got to uh, got to enjoy it and lap it up a bit. As far as uh, how my day actually panned out, I was in the... Uh, the first starting pen behind the elites, but as soon as the gun went off, people just flew past me from everywhere, but just kept it super relaxed and settled into my sort of all day effort and, and rhythm, uh, hiking up the first climb. Got up and over that, and then it's quite gentle and uh, runnable descent down to Bartoni and onto Bernati. And uh, around this, I was like, I was just feeling okay. I wasn't feeling great. I was thinking a lot, having a hard time zoning out actually. And then a little bit past Bernati, so about 25 k's into the race, I put my headphones in, which sometimes I uh, listen to some music or usually podcasts actually in, in training, but never really done it in a race. But I chucked them in my pack at the last minute and I put them on and it really helped because what was distracting me was just the sheer amount of people that were around me and you can just hear all the footsteps and people's breathing was just kind of throwing me off so the music cut that out and it helped a lot but I was still just sort of uh just feeling okay I'm gonna put this camera down on something because it's uh hurt my arm so the next significant point of the race was starting the second major climb up to Grand Colfer 8 which is the high point of the race it's a little bit concerning because you, you look up and just see a stream of runners disappearing up this massive climb into the sky. Uh, but I just tried to stay relaxed, get back into my my rhythm, and uh, I kept eating, gradually started feeling better, more energy was rolling on, then all of a sudden I was passing people, which was surprising, and then before I knew it, I was at the top and <laughs> starting the descent. There's just something about this part of the race, I just started feeling really good cruised off to the descent and when it flattened out I didn't know this part of the course that well so when the descent flattened out checked my watch and realized we're nearly at La Folie you don't, don't pull me up on the pronunciation but 44 k's in a lot further than than what I thought we were uh, got straight in and out of there and then it's really runnable for about a 10k stretch down towards the Champagne Lac aid station and I ended up in a group of about four or five people Still feeling pretty good, but gradually I sort of started to feel like I was struggling to keep up with them a bit. But uh, there's a, a short climb up to the actual Champagne Lac aid station. As soon as we hit that, I was just pulled away from them, which was really surprising. And then I passed several more people on that climb, which was even more surprising. And then I uh, hit the aid station 55 k's in. I was able to see mum and dad for the first time. You always get a boost uh, seeing your crew topped up on uh, on food and everything and again I was in and out super quick I was in and out really quick of all the aid stations I didn't sit down or anything just grabbed what I needed and and got out and then from there to the finish if you haven't seen the elevation profile it's basically just goes boom 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 three three climbs and descents to the finish put the cab ride charge because it went flat and fell asleep <laughs> 
jet lag going over wasn't too bad coming back but anyway uh took off out of Champagne bay lake started climbing again still feeling good climbing well passing more people and then around the top of that climb i faltered a little bit just the energy went a bit flat i wasn't really feeling like eating feeling slightly nauseous took some ginger tablets that cleared it up within about 10 or 15 minutes i was able to eat again get some energy back and then by that stage i had actually started to descend towards Trion. and fr from around this point i'd ran the course before with my coach uh, scotty scotty hawker we ran it in training and I started to realise that I'd made really good time up into here. I got about 35k left. I just got to hold it together. And I just started to feel like I could, I could get it done from there. And if I could hold it together, I could have a really good race. So I uh, hit Trion feeling pretty charged up, pretty excited. And saw mum and dad again, got another boost from that. And then uh, took off up the second to last climb up to uh, Katong. Pronunciation again, not sure, but... <laughs> I'd wreckied this climb uh, two or three times in training, so I knew it pretty well. And it's pretty solid, especially when you got uh, had 4,500 metres of uh, climbing already in the legs. But I was still surprised. Like I, just kept, I just kept feeling surprised at how well I just kept moving, and I was still climbing well, caught up to a, a line of about four or five guys that were moving pretty solidly, so I just hung on the back of them. And uh, once we hit the top, around the top, I, again, I started feeling a little bit flat. And I think it was just getting up to around 2,000 metres uh, elevation late in the race that was sort of making me labour a little bit. Uh, but the group splintered off the top and down the descent, and it's when it started getting dark. So I sort of stopped, got my head torch out, uh, ready for when it did get dark, and... Uh, rolled on down to uh, Valacine and by the time I hit Valacine it was it, it just got dark and that's the last aid station saw mum and dad for the last time 18 k's to go still somehow just feeling good like I just kept looking at my watch and seeing like 80 90 k's and it's like how am I still still running it's you know like I said I just kept surprising myself but uh yeah in and out of there again really quickly and started heading for the finish and this part of the course, the standard course, I'd wrecked several times in training. I knew it really well, but they changed it because of uh, the weather and took us on an alternate alternate route, uh, which wasn't on an exposed section. I would have much preferred to have uh, done the standard route. <laughs> it was dark now. It started raining quite heavily. And this section that they sent us on, it was straight up dangerous like it was so gnarly so technical and rocky and just because there was a lot of sort of fog or mist around you could my headlamp was pretty much useless i could not see anything like the only thing that was keeping me on course was the reflective tape there was a guy behind me and i could just hear him like falling over repeatedly the only thing that kept me upright was uh the vibram mega grip that stuff so good I uh, didn't slip or, or fall, so and it was just it was just really rhythm breaking, especially late in the race like that. But just kept the head down, got through it, and uh, eventually hit La Flagere, and then the last eight k to the finish was back on the uh, standard course. And once I hit there, I knew that section of the course like the back of my hand, and just uh, sent it as hard as I could off that descent, past several more people and uh, rolled into Chamonix, sort of in disbelief, <laughs> and uh, just stoked to finish, stoked with how I ran. I felt like I ran, it's, it's, I don't think I uh, feel like I've ran, it just felt really complete. Like I don't think I've ran that well over 50 or 60 Ks, let alone 100. So it just felt really good to to run solidly all day over 100 Ks. Uh, I started in about 200th place and I worked my way up to 107th is what I finished overall, which sounds pretty unimpressive, but for a Euro European race like that, like it's a lot more competitive and it was 2,144 starters, so it put me in the top 5% of the field, roughly. So I'm just more stoked with how just how I, like I said I felt like I just kept running and running all day there was no point where I 
felt like I was slowing down when I shouldn't have been. And also finished first Aussie. So <laughs> I think there was only about six, six or seven uh, Aussies in the race, but I'm claiming that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that was pretty much the race how it went, and that's uh, that's about it. Lastly, thanks again for uh, all the support. Like I said before, I had lots of messages of well wishes before the race, lots of congratulations after people saying how they follow on the followed on the live track. I got to meet a few people that watched the videos in Chamonix, which is really cool. Mum and Dad for coming over for the race week uh, and crewing for me, just supporting me, support from my family. All the support, it all helps, makes you really feel like you want to uh, do the best you can, so... Much appreciated. On to Europe 2018. <laughs> Definitely want to go back. Uh, hopefully get into TDS for next year. If not, Iger. Pretty keen to give the Iger a crack. So uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll keep you updated on whatever I end up doing next with my running. For anyone who cares. But uh, thanks for watching these videos and hope you've enjoyed them. Talk to you in the next one. Bye. Almost forgot I got to thank my coach, Scotty. Scotty was in Chamonix the entire time I was there training for UTMB, which he crushed, coming 11th place, most uh, competitive ultramarathon ever. But I did both my long runs uh, with Scotty in training, which was pretty nice of him to run with me because it's kind of like a Ford Falcon and a Ferrari. He was... Uh, keeping the pace pretty gentlemanly for me to keep up but he loaded me up with a lot of advice on those runs you know about how to pace the climbs what to expect what to do in certain situations and just watching him climb I'm a visual learner so just techniques he was using with his poles his rhythm etc just felt like it really contributed to me having a, a good day race day so it was a massive help the other thing that was interesting for me, I guess, was the, what I ate throughout the run, because usually I fuel on uh, gels and tailwind as primary fuel source. So I had one gel the entire race, no tailwind. I ate wraps with chocolate almond spread and jam in them, and sweet potato chocolate brownies, plain water, coconut water. That was it. I had about one and a half cliff shot box, a few sips of Cokes in the aid stations from 55 k's onwards, and salty peanuts in the in the aid stations as well. Other thing worth mentioning is I ended up using my Lecky poles, which were clutch. That I didn't like them at first, uh, but they're the Micro Trail Pros, and they got that really sharp tip, and they just they do not slip. And when you get into the mountains and rock and stuff everywhere, that that's it's clutch because uh, every time your poles slip, you lose efficiency and power transfer. So they uh, they just work really well and worth mentioning for sure. Good poles. All right, that's it. Club jumping don't stop on top, but you know we only go to two o'clock. Put your motherfucking